Hello, and welcome to Chapter 4, Section 6, Part 1. Today we are talking about integration with fractions. So basically, the integral that we're trying to find has some sort of fraction in it, and we need to find the integral. So here we go. All right, so first I want to talk about something that we did in the derivative chapter. So when we found the derivative of natural log of x, it equaled 1 over x. So that means if we reverse our direction then, integrating 1 over x dx should equal natural log of x. The only thing is, um, because we are taking an integral now um, and we end up with natural log, um, there is this one small rule with natural logs and logs in general. You can't take a log of a negative number, um, or zero for that matter. So whatever x is, we need to make sure it's a positive number, and that's why we write the absolute value signs there, to make sure that x is actually going to end up positive. So anytime you have um, the integral of 1 divided by something, we can use natural logs as the integral. And of course, we're always going to have that plus c at the end. All right, so starting out with a real easy example. So here we are trying to find the integral of 1 over 2x dx. Well, first, we obviously notice a fraction. So um, normally we want to rewrite this as much as possible so that it's easier to deal with. So I'm actually going to rewrite 1 over 2x as 1 over 2 times 1 over x dx. And then because 1 half or 1 over 2 is just a constant, I can really move that outside the integral. And so I end up with 1 half times the natural log of x plus c absolute value of x, of course. Um, but that makes it way easier. All right, so what happens if we can't just take out a constant like the 1 half? So let's say I have 1 over 2 minus 5x dx as the integral that I'm looking for. So here, obviously, I can't split this up into two fractions now where they're being multiplied. So in this case, I still have a fraction. So if we can do u sub on this, where the bottom part is like what's more complicated, I can say u equals 2 minus 5x, and then use u sub like we did in the last section. So I'm going to find du, which is the derivative of u, which is going to give me negative 5 dx, and then solve for dx to get du over negative 5. So now when I rewrite my problem into terms of u, I can write this as 1 over u, and then instead of dx, it's du over negative 5, which now I do have a constant of negative 1 over 5, integral of 1 over u du. So integrating this, I'm going to end up with the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c times that negative 1 fifths in front, and then just replace the u with my 2 minus 5x. And that's it. All right, so now we can get into more complicated fractions like this one here. We have the integral of 2x minus 7 over x squared minus 7x dx. So we're still going to be using u sub here because we have complications here, we have fractions here, so we know natural log is going to be involved, but we need to make sure we know what to use for u. So keep in mind, when we did u sub, we also said whatever you use for u, the derivative should also be somewhere else in the problem. So I'm going to look for the more complicated of these two, which would be the x squared minus 7. And real quickly in my head, I can figure out, well, the derivative of x squared minus 7x is going to be 2x minus 7, which is great because it's also in the problem. So that's how I'm going to know I'm going to use u equals x squared minus 7x. Oops. That way when I find du, dx is just going to equal du over 2x minus 7. And then when I rewrite my original problem in terms of u, things will cancel. So then I end up just taking the integral of 1 over u du, which is just the natural log. And instead of u, I'm just going to go right ahead and fill in the x squared minus 7x here plus c. All right, so that ended up not that complicated. So because the derivative of u ended up already in the problem, this made it way easier. All right, my next example is similar. Again, I have x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x, so I've got something more complicated on the bottom. Um, so that's probably what I'm going to use for u. Um, 
But if I find the derivative of x squared plus 2x, I end up with 2x plus 2, which isn't exactly what I have on top, but at least the exponents match. Um, so I'm still going to use u equals x squared plus 2x. When I find du, I end up with 2x plus 2 dx. And then let's find dx by itself. So du equals 2x or du over 2x plus 2. So when I rewrite my original problem, I've got that x plus 1 on top. On the bottom, I can rewrite this as u. And then dx, I can rewrite as du over 2x plus 2. So this is the part. It doesn't quite cancel out, but 2x plus 2 is kind of special because 2x plus 2, I can actually factor out a common factor of 2, leaving me with x plus 1, which, hey now, that'll cancel out. So then I end up with a constant of 1 half left over and then the 1 over u times du. So the constant I can take out and then from here we can integrate much easier. So natural log and then instead of u, I'm going to write in the x squared plus 2x plus c. There we go. So not too crazy still. All right, so one more of this type. So again, we've got 2x squared minus 3 over 2x cubed minus 9x. And so we've been saying use the more complicated one as u. Um, and hopefully by now you've kind of noticed that for all of these problems that I've done, the bottom was the one that was more complicated because it had a higher exponent. So in general, anytime you have a higher exponent on the bottom, this is kind of the process you want to take. Use u as the one with the higher exponent. The derivative of it should kind of somehow be in there and then we can use u sub to solve out the rest so i'm gonna have you pause the video right here let's see if you can do this too um, so go ahead and pause and then when you're ready hit play and then we'll see if our answers match all right hopefully you've had some time to think it over work it out on your own these are the things you should have used for u and dx and then you should have gotten this as your final answer. One third times the natural log of 2x cubed minus 9x, all inside absolute value signs, plus c. How'd you do? All right, let's get even more complicated now. So up until now, we've been doing things where one of the exponents was higher than the other, and usually the one that was higher than the other was on the bottom. Um, so larger exponent on the bottom, smaller one on top. So what if it wasn't set up like that? Let's say the exponents on top and bottom, the degrees on the top and the bottom were exactly the same. On top we have an x squared, on the bottom we have an x squared. So whichever one we use to be u, when we find the derivative, we end up with 2x plus something. But nowhere else in the problem is there another 2x or um, to kind of cancel things out when we do our u sub. So when this occurs, the best way is to rewrite our original problem by actually dividing this out. So instead of using u sub, we're going to use long division to divide this out so that we can rewrite our original problem. So I know it's been a while since you've done any sort of long division of this type. So here we go. So if you remember your long division, you are first starting to look at the first terms of each of your dividend and your, um, your divisor. So we want to see what can I multiply x squared by to get x squared, or really like what's x squared divided by x squared. So we get 1. So we put that on top, and then we have to multiply out what we got into um, our x squared plus 1. So when that happens, I end up with x squared plus 1. But I'm just going to rewrite this so that it kind of matches up my terms here. Okay, so then once we've multiplied it out, this is the part where you subtract. So when we subtract, you need to make sure that you're subtracting both the x squared and the plus 1. Um, so I have a little rhyme that goes with it. When you long divide, you draw the line change the sign because when you're subtracted really you have to distribute that negative and so that's why we change the signs of everything so we end up canceling out the x squares and the ones and we're left with that x there so then we look at okay how many times does x squared go into x so what can i multiply x squared by to get x which is 
nothing. Um, so really we end up at the end with x as our remainder and the remainder we always write like this with the remainder on top over whatever I was dividing by which is the x squared plus 1. So what we've basically done is rewritten our original problem instead of x squared plus x plus 1 over x squared plus 1 I'm going to rewrite this as 1 plus x over x squared plus 1 dx. So part of this makes it a little bit easier to integrate because the derivative, or sorry, the antiderivative of 1 is just x. So that part's nice. And then we can find this x over x squared plus 1 separately. So I'm going to turn this into two separate integrals, splitting it up using those properties. And so we end up with just x for the integral of 1, and then plus and then with this integral of x over x squared plus 1, now I can use u sub because if I use x squared plus 1 on the bottom um, as u, then the derivative would be 2x, which at least the x is involved. And so as you notice, like x over x squared plus 1, this is also where the bottom, the denominator, has a higher exponent than the top. So that's kind of nice too. So here we know to use u sub. So dx will equal du over 2x, and then just this part I'm going to rewrite as x over u times du over 2x, which is really just 1 half times the integral of 1 over u du. So then integrating that, I end up with 1 half times the natural log of x squared plus 1 plus c. And then I just need to add that together with the x that I had from the very beginning. So it'll end up being x plus 1 half natural log x squared plus 1 plus c. And one thing I do want to point out for this problem, the absolute value signs in this particular answer are not necessary. Because think about what x squared plus 1 is. Um, we said the absolute value signs are for when um, you, just in case you take the absolute value, or sorry, the natural log of a negative number. That can't happen. But when we think about x squared plus 1, anytime you square anything, it always ends up positive. Adding 1 to it will still keep it positive. So x squared plus 1, no matter what number x is, is still going to be a positive number. So these absolute value signs are actually not necessary, and we can just write them as parentheses. But that only works because x squared plus 1 always stays positive. If it was something like 2x cubed minus 9x, something cubed could stay negative, and so that's why we weren't able to change out our absolute value signs in the last problem. All right, let's do one last example, and again, this time we have the integral of 2x squared plus x minus 2 over 2x plus 1. Um, so again, we don't have a larger exponent, a larger degree on the bottom of the fraction. It's actually larger on top. Um, so for this case, again, we'll need to do long division to rewrite our original problems. Um, so here you get to see long division again. So we're taking 2x squared plus x minus 2 and dividing by 2x plus 1. So again, we start off the problem just by looking at the first term. What can you multiply 2x by to get 2x squared? And that should be x. Then um, we need to multiply the 2x plus 1 by the x and write that underneath. So that ends up being 2x squared plus x. Cool, now we subtract, so we draw the line, change the signs. And coincidentally, everything um, cancels out, and so we're just left with that negative 2, because we're going to bring that down. And then we think to ourselves, 2x times what is negative 2? Nothing. So that would be our remainder. So we have minus 2 over 2x plus 1. You can actually also write this as plus a negative 2, but it means the same thing if you're subtracting or adding a negative. Okay, so we can now rewrite our original problem as x minus 2 over 2x plus 1 dx. And again, I'm going to split up my integral here into two separate ones. Because the integral of x is just using the power rule, x squared over 2 minus, and then with 2 over 2x plus 1, then we can use u sub. Okay. 
So dx equals du over 2, and then we can rewrite this as 2 over u times du over 2, and the 2's will cancel out. So there's no constant for this problem, so it'll just be natural log of 2x plus 1 plus c, and then we just combine that with the x squared over 2 from the very beginning. And then it was minus natural log of 2x plus 1 plus c. Alrighty, that's it for this section. So now you can figure out what to do when you are trying to find the integral of something being divided by each other. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.